So I have a first question. <clears throat> have you ever been in the rebel uh, areas of Aleppo and did, uh, I think, be witness in the serial bombing there? Aerial bomb. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I, I said at the beginning um, that I did not go to areas occupied by militants, and I said my reasons why, so no, I have not been. Donc, la question était à savoir si uh, Eva avait été, été uh, dans des zones contrôlées par les, uh, <coughs> par les rebelles. Et, et elle dit non, puis elle a donné ses raisons en début de conférence. Autre question à Eva et M. Chusodowski. What do you think about Russian intervention in Syria? It is good for Syrian people? L'intervention, une question donc pour Eva et euh, Michel Chusodowski. Pensez-vous que l'intervention euh, russe en Syrie soit euh, positive pour le peuple syrien? The Russian intervention is very different from the U.S. intervention because it was negotiated and agreed with the Syrian government. So it is not in derogation of international law. The, the U.S. intervention is illegal because it's, it is a, an a aggressive act against a sovereign country. That uh, intervention by the Russian uh, uh, forces was, very, was instrumental in waging a real war on terrorism and not a fake war on terrorism because it actually targeted the terrorists. Whereas the U.S. intervention, the U.S.-sponsored intervention, largely targeted the, the civilian infrastructure of an entire country, as confirmed by the figures that I gave you on the, on the number of bombs and targets, 31,900 in both Syria and Iraq. Thank you. Okay. Donc, <rire> donc l'intervention euh, russe est tout à fait différente et diamétralement opposée à l'intervention euh, américaine euh, en Syrie. Euh, D'abord par le fait que l'intervention euh, russe a été négociée avec le gouvernement syrien, donc, syrien, donc elle n'est pas euh, en contradiction avec le droit international. Et l'autre raison est que l'intervention euh, russe euh, est une, euh, mène, enfin, les, les, la Russie mène une, une vraie guerre contre le terrorisme alors que euh, les États-Unis et l'OTAN mènent une fausse guerre contre le terrorisme. Une question s'est adressée en français. On, on parle toujours du rôle de l'Amérique et on parle qu'il y a terrain de l'extérieur pour détruire euh, nos pays. Je, je suis d'accord avec ça, mais jamais on n'a parlé que les pays arabes sont des pays dictatoriaux et qu'il n'existe pas de démocratie. Ils sont responsables comme les autres. So the question was uh, written in French, and it says that we always talk about uh, the uh, U.S.'s role uh, in, uh, in, in, uh, in attacking other countries, but uh, we for often forget to say that the Arab countries are also uh, dictatorships, uh, and they are responsible, just like the others, of uh, internal and external uh, policies and uh, and uh, warlike uh, policies. I agree. Thanks. So, why is the CIA, the US government, and the West? So, I don't know who's, to whom the question was addressed, but it was about uh, saying uh, that uh, Arab countries are also dictatorships. Uh, yeah, I didn't understand if that was a comment or a question, but um, it is rather ironic that um, we're talking about human rights and democracy in Syria, and yet the America and Canada is a close ally of Saudi Arabia. Donc, je trouve euh, quand même, je ne sais pas si la question, si c'était une question ou un commentaire, mais je trouve ça ironique qu'on parle euh, des droits de l'homme euh, en Syrie, alors que le Canada et les États-Unis sont quand même alliés avec l'Arabie Saoudite. Yeah. Most of, those, most, of those, most of the dictatorships in developing countries were installed by the United States of America, okay? What? And look at the Western Hemisphere. 
And essentially, the United States bombs countries that don't comply. Now, I don't think that the United States has any lessons in democracy with the type of government that they've just installed. <laughs> La plupart des dictatures dans le monde arabe ont été installées avec, sous la houlette et avec la bienveillance des États-Unis. Euh, et aujourd'hui, euh, les États-Unis, avec le gouvernement qu'ils ont, n'ont aucune leçon de démocratie à donner. Donc, la, la question est, pourquoi la CIA, le, le gouvernement américain et l'Ouest, conduisent de pareilles politiques euh, que vous décrivez? Why is the CIA, the U.S. government and the West, are conducting the policy that you are describing? <laughs> okay, I'm the expert on the CIA, I guess. <laughs> it is called conquest, hegemony, and imperialism. It is a global military agenda, and it is used, the terrorists are used as an instrument. They call it, they call it intelligence assets. And uh, you send in the terrorists to destabilize and destroy countries, and ultimately then you come in and pick up the pieces. And this is what has happened um, sequentially throughout the Middle East, uh, starting with well, Central Asia, starting with Afghanistan, and essentially destabilizing, it's not, it's not destabilizing uh, secular governments and with a view to ultimately installing Islamic State regimes, which are proxies of the United States. Donc, I, uh, la raison yeah. peut se résumer en deux mots, impérialisme et conquête, euh, dont les terroristes sont euh, l'instrument, puisqu'on utilise, on utilise euh, la menace terroriste comme une marotte pour euh, justifier une intervention et ainsi euh, un changement de régime. Mais en fait, ce n'est pas n'importe quel changement de régime. On essaye de changer les régimes, euh, en particulier laïcs, et euh, les, on essaye de, de déboulonner les gouvernements laïcs pour euh, installer des, euh, des, des, des gouvernements euh, islamiques qui seront des euh, États clients des États-Unis. How did you meet the soldiers who you interviewed was in Darar, I think. Où avez-vous rencontré le soldat que vous avez interviewé qui était à Darar? He was driving a taxi. Um, soldiers in the Syrian army don't get paid much, uh, unlike some of the mercenaries. Um, and so he was driving a taxi uh, when not doing his work as a soldier, and um, it just came up in conversation. Donc je l'ai rencontré dans un taxi parce qu'il faut savoir qu'en Syrie, les, contrairement euh, notamment aux mercenaires, euh, les soldats syriens pas, ne sont pas euh, rémunérés grassement. Donc euh, quand il n'est pas dans l'armée, cet homme est chauffeur de taxi. Euh, les médias nous disent qu'en 2011, les rebelles étaient pacifiques et que c'est la réponse de la Syrie qui les a radicalisés. Le fait que des rebelles participent aux négociations aujourd'hui ne donne-t-il pas raison à ces affirmations des médias? So, uh, those media uh, said that in 2011, rebels was a pacific, and this is the, answer, the response of the Syrian government who radicalized them. So the fact that those rebels now want to participate in negotiations, uh, on, dirait, uh, to prove that the, the, are, the, the informations of the media are true. I would flip that and say the fact that the Syrian army is willing to negotiate with these terrorists shows the will for political um, solution to this crisis. Je retournerai le commentaire euh, pour affirmer que en fait, c'est plutôt le fait que l'armée syrienne et le gouvernement syrien sont prêts à négocier avec ces terroristes euh, qui montre que euh, ce sont les, les que le gouvernement syrien est plutôt de bonne foi euh, dans ce qui a trait à, à un règlement pacifique de ce conflit. I mean, uh Professor Shosodovsky already outlined um, about these so-called pacifist rebels, and I've also spoken about it, so um, I, I think it's a redundant question. Okay. Okay. It is a well-established fact that Hamby uh, and Wahhabi ideology are the stern selves of Al-Qaeda and ISIS, who are fighting the Syrian government and killing the Syrian people. My question, my question is, how, uh, how, uh, how our country support these elements? 
was. <laughs> how can our okay. how can our country support these elements? I mean, <coughs> it, 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 maybe I should reread it. No, I think. Well, the fact of the matter is that they have supported these elements. Ils les appuient. Officially, they don't. Officiellement, ils ne les appuient pas. Mais ce sont ce qu'on appelle en français des opérations sous-main, covert operations, qui consistent à appuyer, à créer les groupes rebelles et ensuite et à les financer, les armer. Euh, ce ne sont pas nécessairement des agents des services de renseignement, ce sont des instruments, ce qu'on appelle en anglais « intelligence asset ». Et c'est vraiment très bien documenté, et même nous avons des renseignements officiels à ce sujet, à savoir que les, que les États-Unis appuient les groupes terroristes d'Al-Qaïda. Et il y a en ce moment une initiative euh, au Congrès des États-Unis menée par la représentante d'Hawaï, euh, Tulsi Gabbard, à savoir euh, qu'il y a un projet de loi euh, rendant illégal l'appui au terrorisme. C'est illégal et c'est en dérogation du droit international et c'est le crime ultime défini par le protocole de Nuremberg. So, have you worked alongside other journalists in Syria, which media did they work for? So, have you worked with other journalists in Syria, and with what media did they work for? Well, I mentioned the November delegation, which comprised, I'm not sure all the journalists, but definitely a team of, I think, three from the BBC, maybe four, New York Times, LA Times, and the other journalists, I'm not sure who they were. Um, I have encountered Lise Doucet of the BBC in April 2014, Uh, when I went to the French hospital, which I mentioned in the talk, um, at, where there were children being treated for injuries sustained during the mortar attack on the Al Manar school. And um, so I saw Lise there, and I think that we reported slightly differently on who had hit the school. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Donc, euh, comme, je vous dis, comme je vous le mentionnais, j'ai été. En, euh, je, quand j'ai été en novembre, j'ai fait partie euh, d'une délégation de journalistes et j'en ai rencontré plusieurs. Euh, je me souviens que trois d'entre eux faisaient partie de la BBC, d'autres du New York Times et de plusieurs autres publications. Mais je me souviens très bien avoir rencontré euh, Lise Doucet de la BBC, euh, que avec qui euh, j'ai visité euh, l'hôpital dont je faisais mention précédemment. Euh, mais par contre, je pense que nos... Euh, nos témoignages concernant qui avait frappé cet hôpital, qui l'avait attaqué, sont sensiblement divergents. Um, also, when I was in uh, Aleppo, let's see, July, I believe, I saw Robert Fisk, um, who has reported many times from Aleppo and all of Syria. J'ai aussi rencontré Robert Fisk, qui uh, parle beaucoup de la Syrie. And in November, I saw, I forget the guy's name, but he's with Channel 4, uh, British Channel, Krishnan, I think is his name, Guru. J'ai aussi uh, côtoyé un journaliste de Channel 4, uh, j'ai oublié son nom, je pense, uh, Guru Krishnan. Yes, and um, he, Channel 4 is interesting because they routinely have um, interviews with journalists who are embedded with um, the militants, including Al-Qaeda, or including even one incident where one of their journalists, it might have been Krishnan, I'm not sure, was embedded with Nouruddin Al-Zinki. Et euh, c'est intéressant parce que Ch Channel 4, euh, sur une base quotidienne, euh, diffuse des reportages de certains euh, reporters qui sont euh, infiltrés, enfin qui, sont, qui, sont, euh, qui font partie, ou qui, qui, sont, euh, qui couvrent, qui sont euh, dans, sur le terrain de euh, certains groupes euh, terroristes. Okay. Donc, voilà. OK. With all that factual evidence, are we saying that there are no institutions in Canada judicial system that can block the Canadian government from taking part in an illegal war or from selling arms to uh, Saudi Arabia. Donc, avec toutes les preuves, est-ce qu'on est en train de dire qu'il n'y a pas aucun, si, euh, aucune institution Canada capable de bloquer le gouvernement canadien de participer à cette guerre illégale et de vendre des armes à l'Arabie saoudite? Uh, no, I mean, the Canadian government uh, <coughs> contravenes international law somewhat regularly and there is no reaction to it because it's a question of who's going to uh, who's going to enforce it 
Um, and uh, in the case of the uh, light armored vehicle sale to Saudi Arabia just yesterday, the day before, there was a court case in that attempt to block the light armored vehicle, but the, the judgment, of it, which I didn't read, but I just read the read a story about it, said, um, uh, no, the, the government has the right to sell these vehicles, even if it contravenes their own uh, stipulations around, or my reading at least, and, and certainly the people who pursued the case, uh, their stipulations around um, uh, Canadian arms not being used in, uh, to violate human rights. I'd like to just say something. I think we could do something if we were, if Canadian public were better informed. I think if, if people across the land knew what is being presented here today, our government would comply. That's the nature of a democracy. And uh, that's not happening because our media is not informing the broader public. And uh, we, have, we are welcoming here several Canadian media. We receive them with courtesy. Uh, and I think there are certain lessons that they should learn as journalists. Independent journalists and mainstream uh, uh, journalists should work together. But as long as the corporate media and the official media disinform the public, our government will not change its course in any specific way. Je pense que l'une des raisons, c'est que euh, le public n'est pas assez informé euh, de cette euh, situation. Et si nous étions mieux, mieux formés, nous pourrions faire plus. Euh, je, euh, et je pense que euh, aujourd'hui, les médias qui sont ici euh, présents doivent euh, tirer une certaine leçon euh, de cet exposé et euh, non la moindre serait que de travailler euh, ensemble avec les médias indépendants euh, et non pas euh, avoir euh, et, au lieu de euh, ressasser la, 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 la propagande euh, <rire> Simplement dit, si nous étions mieux informés par les, par les médias, par nos médias, je crois que nous aurions davantage d'opportunités de pressionner notre gouvernement à agir. Mais je dois, je dois mentionner, il y a, il y a, évidemment, c'est très important parce qu'il y a une action juridique qui a été menée à Montréal par le, par le professeur Daniel Turp euh, avec les étudiants de l'Université de Montréal concernant la vente des armes euh, du Canada à l'Arabie saoudite qui, euh, ensuite, appuie effectivement les, les groupes terroristes qui sont en Syrie. Et en quelque sorte, ces armes-là se retrouvent dans les mains des terroristes. Alors, est-ce que... Est -ce, bon, il y a eu une procédure euh, légale et ensuite, euh, bon, la juge, euh, with all due respect, a dit... C'est la juge Danielle Tremblay, la mère, a dit qu'on n'est pas là pour passer un jugement moral sur une décision du ministre Stéphane Dion, euh, pardon, l'ancien ministre oui. Stéphane Dion. Alors, comment savez-vous que les attaques viennent des rebelles et non de Bachar el-Assad? How do you know that attacks are, are not from the rebels, but uh, from, are from the rebels not, and not from Bachar el-Assad? It's fairly simple. You just see the point where it's hit, the type of mortar, um, the, you know, military experts can determine the trajectory. And, uh, I mean, this is... A, a common um, thing I've heard by people who support the rebels to say, well, surely it's just the government staging these attacks in order to frame the rebels. But I think Michelle had something maybe more in depth to say. You always blame the victims for the crimes that you commit. I think that's a simple, straightforward answer. On, on essaie souvent, de faire, toujours de faire pour, porter le fardeau de nos uh, crimes par les victimes. Whether we like, whether we like the, the government of Syria or not, 
That is not the issue. It's our governments which are committed to committing these crimes. And well, the 31,900 th 31, structures bombed in a two-year period. Et ce qu'on aime ou qu'on n'aime pas le gouvernement syrien, ce n'est pas là le fond de la question. Le fond de la question, c'est que ce sont nos gouvernements qui sont euh, responsables. OK. So, euh, Pourriez-vous nous décrire l'événement où vous avez expliqué l'absence de sources des grands médias? Uh, I think we refer to the, uh, the United Nations. Uh, so, can you describe the event uh, when you have explained the absence of sources of uh, mainstream media? Oh, okay. So the question is referring to, um, this is good, it's time to clear the air on this one. It's referring to a panel at the United Nations on December 9th, um, in which I spoke, uh, Sarah Flounders of the International Action Center spoke, Donna Nasser, who's an American um, lawyer who went to Syria with the U.S. Peace Council spoke, and Bahman Azad, who is a coordinator for the Hands Off Syria Coalition.net uh, spoke. Donc je pense que cette question fait état d'une conférence, enfin de, oui, une conférence à laquelle j'ai participé et où j'ai pu parler euh, aux Nations Unies le 9 décembre dernier et où euh, j'ai pu parler avec, avec plusieurs autres personnes. So I, I actually just want to make a couple of points about that. First of all, it was instigated by myself and it was coordinated uh, via um, Bauman of the Hands Off Syria Coalition, the U.S. Peace Council. And it was not something the Syrian government organized, but certainly the ambassador to the United Nations facilitated getting the room there. Et euh, je tiens à préciser que c'était une initiative personnelle qui a vu le jour avec l'aide notamment de la coalition euh, US Hands of Syria et euh, par le Conseil de la paix des États-Unis. Euh, mais donc ce n'était pas euh, du tout euh, l'initiative du gouvernement syrien, même si effectivement l'ambassadeur euh, de la Syrie auprès des Nations Unies nous a aidé à trouver euh, la salle. And the reason I um, initiated this was because the U.S. Peace Council, which had visited Syria in the summer when they came back, a number of their members who had visited um, gave a, a panel testimony of what they'd seen. So I thought it was a good idea to do. Et la raison pour laquelle j'ai voulu faire cette, euh, euh, cette, organiser cette conférence, c'est parce que euh, le Conseil de la paix des États-Unis, qui avait été euh, en Syrie, et qui en est revenu euh, à leur retour, en ont fait, euh, ont relaté euh, ce qu'ils ont vu euh, sur place, et donc j'ai pensé que c'était intéressant euh, de, de viser plus haut. So, uh, during my section of the panel, I, I spoke at length about what I'd seen in Aleppo, similar to here, and, and I, I can't remember offhand, I probably touched upon other areas of Syria. And um, during the question and answer uh, period, one of the journalists in the audience Um, said, uh, because I had been saying, basically, you're not getting the full picture, the media is not telling the full truth on Syria. And he said, how can you be so sure, you know, we have sources, uh, and he was referring to uh, Aleppo, he said, we have sources in, in groups on the ground. Et pendant euh, une, par une partie de ma, de, de, pendant ma présentation, euh, quelqu'un m'a demandé euh, comment vous, vous pouvez être, comment pouvez-vous être certaine de ce que vous avancez, puisque nous savons, nous avons des sources qui sont sur place. So I replied to him that, in fact, they didn't. Um, they had Al-Qaeda. They had um, the white helmets which embed with Al-Qaeda and which are funded fr by the West over a million, a uh, hundred million dollars. They have unnamed activists. They have Médecins Sans Frontières, which relies on unnamed activists and so-called uh, doctors who may or may not be doctors in these areas of East Aleppo. But they didn't have, these big institutions did not have their own personnel. So they're relying on second-hand information from some very dubious sources. Et euh, je lui ai répondu qu'en fait, c'est faux. Euh, la seule chose qu'ils ont sur le terrain, c'est euh, Al-Qaïda euh, et tous ces groupes terroristes qui sont financés à coups de millions, Médecins sans frontières ou, euh, ou certains rebelles, mais eux, personnellement, eux, directement, n'ont aucun lien. Et donc, ils doivent euh, à chaque fois euh, se référer à des faits de seconde main. So one thing I, I want to say, just in relation to the whole UN uh, panel, um, some... Uh fact-checking sites like Snopes and Channel 4, which have been the basis for further art, um, articles, issued uh, smear articles on me, well, articles on me, fact-checking what I'd said. And that's fair. With regard to both um, Snopes and Channel 4, they began by character assassination. And I think um, if the screen is still on, I will plug this in, because I want to make a point here. Donc, alors, euh, les... 
Et en fait, pendant, à, à la suite de cette conférence, plusieurs euh, médias, notamment Snopes et Channel 4, euh, ont décidé d'écrire de, euh, des articles ou des, des billets contre moi. Je ne sais pas si le projecteur doit être tourné. Ok, great. So, uh, basically, both uh, Snopes and Channel 4 refer to me writing... Yeah, no, that's great. That's what I want to show. Yeah. Um, they refer to me writing a blog on RT, Russia Today. The blog is called the Opinion Section of Russia Today. Et ils ont décidé de... Euh, ils ont dit que euh, j'étais... Euh, que j'écrivais sur un blog euh, de Russia Today. Ce blog en question, c'est la section opinion de euh, Russia Today. And if you know it, I'll just scroll through. There's over 70 contributors to this opinion section. Et vous verrez euh, à l'écran qu'il y a plus de 70 personnes qui euh, écrivent dans cette section. And with regard to myself, I've written a total of eight um, opinion pieces for this section. Et moi, personnellement, j'ai écrit huit euh, articles dans cette section opinion. And the first one was actually from Palestine, from Gaza, in April 2013. So the implication was that I am writing exclusively for Russia, and that I'm in fact maintaining a blog from, for Russia. Et euh, tout ça impliquait que j'écrivais pour la Russie, euh, et que je ne faisais que... Euh, euh, qu'écrire pour leur compte et pour leurs intérêts. Okay. Alors que vous voyez ici à l'écran, ici j'ai euh, écrit le premier article que j'ai euh, soumis pour euh, cette section euh, traite de la question euh, palestinienne alors que j'étais euh, à Gaza. And so um, I'll, I'll let uh, Professor Shostakovsky add a, a comment, but I just want to say there were things I could have articulated better. I fully admit fault at not being as articulate as I want to be all the time. So I should have not said Al Quds Hospital was not targeted. I can't prove that. What I should have said was Al Quds Hospital was not reduced to rubble, and that's a fact. And I was not wrong. So the fact checkers um, failed to check that fact. And I was looking on my blog. Uh, you can find a list on my blog of all the uh, different sites I publish. Um, and the other thing I want to point out was with regard to what I said about a girl who may or may not appear in different videos, I can't prove it. All I can say is that we know media has been manipulated, we know videos have been staged, and we know that some of these elements, whether it's the Aleppo Media Center, which is funded by the West, or the White Helmets, or other groups in these militant occupied areas, we know it is quite possible and credible to believe they could uh, fabricate some videos. And so I was wrong the way I phrased it, but certainly there has been media manipulation in order to pull on the heartstrings of people in the West to do something to no-fly zone that country. Et aussi, on a essayé de me, de, de me reprocher certains détails que j'aurais omis. Euh, C'est vrai, peut-être qu'il y a certains, certains faits que j'aurais pu... Euh proposé euh, différemment, notamment cette histoire de, où j'ai dit que euh, euh, cette, euh, cette jeune fille qu'on voit parler sur les vidéos euh, euh, n'existait pas. Euh, c'est vrai que c'est quelque chose qu'on ne peut pas prouver, mais par contre, ce que je sais, c'est que les médias sont euh, euh, manipulés et que euh, c'est très plausible de, euh, de croire, euh, de croire à, à, ça, à, cette, à ce coup monté. J'aimerais juste rajouter une chose. Les médias, et en particulier euh, les médias anglo-britanniques, euh, qu'est-ce que je dis, anglo-américaines, euh, manipulent les images et les vidéos de manière routinière. There's a routine manipulation of videos and images. Um, we've attempted to document a few cases. I'll give you just one example. It, it happens to be on my phone now. Uh, you may not see this, but this is Tripoli, 2011, celebrating Liberation Day. Now, if you look carefully, the flags are Indian flags. They're not. They're not. They're not the flags of. <laughs> they're not the flags of the of the terrorists either of the of uh, King Idris. And then, if you look at, uh, I mean, they they do this all the time. They have. I have another example of. Uh, 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 of the coverage of uh, CNN in, um, in China. And uh, what they do is that they're showing Indian cops, okay? Uh, it's, it's disappeared from my screen, but, but 
It's systematic. Okay? Now, the other aspect is, as you may know, Comme vous le savez, il y a maintenant une campagne contre les médias indépendants et on les accuse d'être des agents de Moscou. Okay? Bon, on, a, on accuse Trump aussi d'être un agent de Moscou, alors c'est normal. Mais, mais bref, de, je, je crois que ça serait intéressant de savoir quelle, quelle est la réaction des, des médias euh, corporatifs canadiens à ce, ce genre d'accusation, parce que c'est une aberration. Et c'est diffamatoire. Donc, on demande à un des conférenciers d'élaborer sur le rôle joué par l'Iran. Donc, we ask to one of the speakers to elaborate more about the role played by Iran. Iran, the role of Iran. The role of Iran. Well, Iran has a, has an agreement with the Syrian government to assist in the in the counter-terrorism operation. Again, it's a similar agreement to that of Russia. And uh, Iran is also, uh, Iran, Turkey, Russia, and Syria are involved in the, in the peace process in Astana, and the United States is not. L'Iran uh, a aussi un, un, un accord euh, avec le gouvernement syrien de la même nature que celui qui existe entre qui a été établi entre la Syrie et la Russie euh, dans, dans le cadre donc d'une lutte contre le terrorisme et euh, aussi euh, il faut souligner que l'Iran à côté de la Turquie et de la Russie euh, et bien sûr euh, aux côtés du gouvernement syrien euh, font partie du processus de paix euh, qui se tient à Astana. So follow the money. We have an understanding as you, uh, as to who finance the mass media propaganda, the interests and states are, that are behind, at least we think we do. Could you please explain how your efforts were financed in order to bring the truth forward? So uh, si la question c'est, que vous pouvez expliquer comment vous êtes financé pour uh, faire surgir la vérité? <laughs> Oh, <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm I'm a Russian agent. That's all. Um, I actually I'll direct you to my latest simple blog post in which I outline precisely that. Um, I guess I'll plug this in again. Je vous propose euh, de jeter un œil sur. Euh, Mon dernier, ma dernière pièce que j'ai écrite sur mon blog. Um, I got a little tired of this silly propaganda. Um, so, in my blog post, I, I reposted an interview I did with RT in which I addressed this issue. And then I, I posted about um, this thing about me writing a blog for RT when it's in fact an opinion piece. Um, Oh, well, you can read it. Find out my blog. The point being, I write for um, a number of independent sites and some sites that pay me a whopping 50 bucks per article. Um, and I've done online media work, maintaining websites to earn money. And also, there's a donate button on my blog. And some people feel that my work is something they wish to contribute to. So that's how I earn money. Uh, I live very simply. I don't own a house, a car. I buy secondhand clothing. I, I live very frugally. And I've had to fundraise uh, on a couple of occasions when I've gone to Syria. So that's me. Donc j'ai, je suis, je n'ai pas de. Donc euh, souvent, voilà, j'écris pour plusieurs sources, pour plusieurs euh, médias. Certains me payent euh, un gros 50 dollars pour euh, pour mes articles. Euh, donc j'ai euh, j'ai assumé plusieurs euh, boulots, notamment celui euh, de euh, de faire de l'entretien de de l'entretien de site web. Euh, en plus de ça, j'ai euh, sur mon blog un petit euh, un petit bouton euh, donné. Euh, donc, il euh, y a certaines personnes qui se sentent, euh, qui sentent que mon travail vaut, euh, mérite d'être poursuivi, donc euh, qui se sentent généreux. Euh, sinon, je vis de façon très frugale et j'ai euh, dû, à certaines reprises, euh, m'autofinancer pour euh, certains voyages.
And I, I'll just note, it, it's possible that I could have misunderstood the tone. Maybe, maybe the person who asked this question simply wanted me to acknowledge that a number of people do donate, donate to my blog, and I'm very grateful for everybody who contributes in any sense. So I, I apologize if I misunderstood the tone there. Je m'excuse si uh, j'ai uh, mal compris uh, le, le, le sous-entendu de la question. Uh, je l'ai pris uh, de façon négative. J'aurais peut-être pas dû. Mais uh, voilà, je remercie aussi tous ceux uh, par la même occasion qui ont uh, voulu, qui, qui se sont sentis généreux et qui ont, uh, qui, qui ont Uh, I just want to make a, a short comment. I, I think people should understand that independent journalism is based on honesty and frugality. And uh, it is very difficult for an independent journalist, once they have done what they, whatever has reported, to be hired by a mainstream media so that their commitment is, is a, it's a tremendous commitment. And our, I mean, I can say our media global research is funded by its readers. We don't receive a penny from foundations or from governments. Most of the authors are volunteers. That is the nature of independent media. Now, of course, you ruin your career And there are many journalists, independent journalists, who don't comply, um, who have been war correspondents, but if they say the truth, they're immediately blacklisted. Je tiens à dire que être média indépendant, ça repose sur euh, de l'honnêteté et la frugalité, parce qu'une fois que euh, quelqu'un s'est fait connaître comme média indépendant, comme Eva, c'est très difficile ensuite de se faire embaucher euh, dans d'autres euh, okay. médias plus conventionnels. Uh, Prime Minister Trudeau seems to be a strong believer in the MSM, Syria narrative, that you believe to be mostly false. Why? And do you believe there is any way to change his mind? So, the MSM being the mainstream media? Is what we were doing? Yeah, probably. Yeah, I mean, you know, If you look at Trudeau's foreign policy more generally, I mean, the light armored vehicle sale to Saudi Arabia is a, is a clear example. If you look at his policy towards Palestinian rights, I mean, it's terrible. It's horrible, right? Like, it's not quite as terrible as the previous government, but it's terrible, right? I mean, I, can, I can go into all kinds of different ways in which, you know, it's, it, you can go, you can be a registered charity in this country and send people to go join the Israeli Defense Force. Right? You can get tax rebate. The Canadian government subsidizes people who organize to send young Canadian Jews to go join the Israeli military. Right? So, and Trudeau is not changing that, and he's not changing all kinds of other policies on that front. Um, so, so you know, on this front, it's, I think what, what Michelle said earlier on, it's a political question. He will change if there is population pressure to change these policies. And right now, his policy is to continue having uh, Canadian special forces on the ground, uh, to continue to uh, uh, you know side with uh, you know rebel oppositional forces. Um, and uh, if we want something different, we have to force them to bring in something different. Unfortunately, again, as Michelle mentioned, the dominant media is not on our side in this struggle. Um, so that's why, you know, there's this conference taking place of this and other initiatives is to try to build around that okay. and to build that, uh, that political power. So, so Trudeau is not, uh, you know, this is just one issue, but across the board on his foreign policy, it's not, it's not some sort of benevolent foreign policy, right? If you take, take Trudeau's policy vis-a-vis -vis Haiti, Take Trudeau's policy vis-a-vis -vis, uh, uh, the Ukraine. You find different places in the world, you'll find the general tendency is that Canadian foreign policy sides with empire, U.S. empire, and Canadian corporate interests. Overwhelmingly, that's what drives Canadian foreign policy, this case and others. En gros, la... Le... Juste, une... ouais, juste... Juste, juste un commentaire à faire. Nous avons ici euh, des représentants de la presse montréalaise et de Radio-Canada. Je me demandais si Alexandra voulait faire un commentaire sur, sur ce débat. Non? Vous ne pouvez pas. Parce qu'on vous invite. 
Non, non. Je crois honnêtement un dialogue, un dialogue sur cette question est fondamental. Bon, alors moi, je vous pose la question. Est-ce que vous avez un, un point de vue à formuler à ce sujet OK. OK. OK, OK. S'il vous plaît, un peu de décorum. Alors, non, non, non. Bon, ma, ma deuxième question. Qu'est-ce qu'il va être rapporté dans la, euh, par Radio-Canada On verra. On verra. Merci. Alors, question. What is the detail about Western soldier bank bunkers, command headquarters, British, um, American, Israeli, uh, Qatari? Uh, on a signé. Je ne sais pas. C'est quoi la, les, les détails à propos d'un soldat de l'Ouest? On veut savoir, donc, euh, qu'est-ce qu'on sait euh, des, de, de, de la situation des soldats occidentaux en, sur, sur le terrain. I can't say anything definitively. I can say what I've seen reported uh, on at least two occasions. And also to note before doing that, uh, Israel has on multiple occasions um, illegally bombed Syria. And it did so in, uh, I believe it was January, just a few weeks ago, bombing Al Maze Air Base. So this is a crime, and yet Israel's never held accountable. But this question is referring to what can you say about um, Israeli, Qatari, um, <coughs> American, um, British, Uh, command headquarters and um, bunkers in, in, in Syria. It doesn't, I presume it means in Syria. Um, I can't say definitively, but again, I saw a couple of reports. One in um, late last year, say, or maybe summer to late last year, saying uh, the Russians had targeted in West, western Aleppo province an intelligence bunker, but I, I had that corroborated by a journalist in Lebanon who um, had sources and said that she had been told this, but I can't personally corroborate that. However, it's highly possible, um, given their interest in Syria. And the other was that in, when Aleppo was liberated, there were reports that I believe it was 14 intelligence assets uh, had been um, arrested, and I don't know what happened. I believe they might have been Uh, I don't know what happened, but there were reports that they had been arrested um, in eastern areas of Aleppo. So uh, maybe you can speak to that. Je n'ai uh, personne. Just, just say uh, one extra thing on this, is that right from the beginning, special forces were uh, embedded with uh, the terrorist formations, okay? And they were in, they had logistical contact with the, uh, with the command structures of US, NATO, Israel, uh, as well as the allies, Saudi, etc. So that this is a, this is a routine process. That, and they also have satellite phones and so on and so forth. Um, so that when they're bombed, uh, they are inside with the, you know, with the terrorists. And, uh, and, and in fact, uh, this has been confirmed by official sources U.S. sources, because they say we have special forces on the ground. And then we had a whole series of, of, um, of, of uh, Western special forces who were arrested, and in some cases they were liberated with prisoners exchange. There was a, an agreement between Damascus and Paris for the liberation of, of, of French parachutistes at an earlier period. So that what I'm saying is that the special forces are embedded within the terror formations, which, uh, in effect, uh, confirms their complicity in, in these terrorist acts, because they're also providing uh, military advice and so on and so forth to the, uh, to the terror formations. Donc, quatre, ouais. yeah. Donc euh, ce que disait Eva, c'est que, euh, donc, en, en gros, euh, elle n'a pas été elle-même... Euh, 
euh, témoin de, euh, de, de gens de renseignement ou de, ou de, de, de position des, ou d'équipements militaires euh, occidentaux euh, sur le terrain, mais euh, elle se souvient notamment que, euh, elle rappelait notamment qu'après la libération d'Alep euh, en décembre dernier, on a retrouvé 14 agents de renseignement. Euh, qui était caché dans, dans, la, dans la zone est d'Alep. Euh, et le euh, professeur Chosodowski euh, soulignait que dès le début euh, du, du, du conflit en Syrie, les, euh, les, les, les agents de renseignement occidentaux étaient euh, liés euh, aux, aux soi-disant euh, rebelles, et ceci est confirmé par euh, des sources officielles. Okay. Alors, any comments on Trump's safety zones for Syria euh, aucun commentaire sur les zones sécuritaires de Trump pour la Syrie. Uh, I've given up speculating. Um, I'll leave that to people who might be able to comment on it. Comment. Those, those three zones are tantamount to, to uh, no-fly zone. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they provide legitimacy. Well, they, they provide leg, quote-unquote legitimacy to U.S. presence within Syria, military presence within Syria. And uh, they are, of course, in derogation of international law. Very dangerous, could lead to military escalation uh, and a broader war because, again, it's confrontation with Russia. And unless Trump signs an agreement with Damascus, which is highly unlikely, uh, this, uh, this uh, presents, I think, a very dangerous uh, process of transition. No. See. Ce genre de, il s'agit ici d'une prémisse par, euh, à une zone d'exclusion aérienne qui est tout à fait euh, qui, qui vise à légitimer la présence états-unienne en Syrie, ce qui est contre la loi et qui peut mener à une escalation, euh, une escalade, euh, puisqu'il s'agit ici d'une confrontation directe avec la Russie. Euh, on ne peut pas parler de, euh, de, de solutions pacifiques euh, de la part des États-Unis tant qu'ils n'auront pas euh, signé un accord avec Damas, ce qui est très peu probable. d'autres questions, mais ça va être la fin, je crois. Euh, Pensez-vous qu'il y a un risque d'augmenter les actes terroristes en recevant des réfugiés syriens? So, do you think there is a risk of increasing a terrorist act by receiving a Syrian refugees? Uh, OK. Attends. I don't, I don't. Ouais. Je ne crois pas. So, euh, C'est vraiment mal écrit. What do you think of Tulsi Gubar recent trips to Syria and we stop funding foreign terrorist bill? I don't. Yeah, what do you think of Tulsi Gabbard, congresswoman from Hawaii, her mm. recent trip to Syria and her bill to stop arming terrorism or terrorists in Syria? Um, I, I personally am glad that she went to Syria. You know, what she reports uh, corroborates what Syrians have been saying for six years and what I've been saying and what other journalists have been saying. Um, I think it was very honest of her to do so and very brave, honestly, you know, in, in the context of U.S. context and politics for her to, to go there. Not brave, uh, brave also, you know, for the sense of danger that's there, but really brave to stand up and say um, she wanted to hear what Syrians had to say and to transmit what she saw. Um, so I, I fully applaud her. I know she's going to be trashed in the media and she's going to be vilified. And she probably knows that as well. But I, I respect her decision. And as for the stop arming terrorist bill, um, also I respect that. And I actually met with her in uh, December. And um, I, I wanted to ask about that bill. And it, it does include not only ISIS and al Nusra. So I think that this is really important. Um, obviously, and it's a shame that it has to be um, a bill in Congress when the UN itself has passed resolutions saying stop arming terrorists. 
Euh, donc, euh, je pense que euh, Tulsi Gabhart's euh, démarche, est euh, très honnête. C'est un acte courageux euh, de sa part de s'être rendu, euh, compte tenu bien sûr de la, de la, de la scène politique aux États-Unis, de s'être rendu en Syrie et d'avoir transmis les, euh, ce, que, ce que dit la population syrienne euh, depuis déjà six ans. Et euh, je sais qu'elle sera, euh, et elle le sait elle-même probablement, qu'elle sera vilipendée, mais euh, je pense que c est, c est, enfin, son, sa démarche est très courageuse. Alors, with even Canada's so-called socialist party, the NDP, and in particular local MP Hélène Laverdière, supporting the White Helmets and regime change, what option do we have to achieve change in Canada's policy within our political system? What does this say about the level of democracy in Canada? Qu'est-ce que... Um, I'm, I'm actually doing a book on the, that goes over the history of the NDP, CCF, foreign policy, and uh, labor unions and other sort of left forces. And the, the, it's grim. It is a grim, it's grim, um, you know, the, the uh, NDP uh, called on Stéphane Dion to, uh, to uh, nominate the White Helmets for the um, Nobel Peace Prize. Um, And, uh, but it's, you know, it's, it's one example among many where they go, basically they follow what's in the media, right? The media sets the stage for what the NDP takes on on foreign policy, unless, and there are ex exceptions to this, there is significant mobilization, right? So you'll find examples in 2003 with the Iraq, with the Iraq war when there was, you know, in the case of Montreal, hun literally hundreds of thousands of people on the street, then the NDP will take good positions and will put pressure to the government. But on issues where there isn't much activism taking place, they overwhelmingly follow what's in, uh, on, you know, on Radio Canada or in the Globe and Mail or, or whatnot. Um, so so there's, there's limited room, um, you know, but within the NDP also, there, it's, there are factions within, within the NDP, and this, this goes back, you know, since, since the creation of the CCF in the 1930s, uh, the predecessor of the NDP. There, there are fa there's always been factions that have wanted a more uh, internationalist foreign policy, that don't want uh, foreign policy to just be an area that they leave in the hands of, of the sort of status quo, right? Basically historic compromise of social democracy. I don't want to get into all this sort of, you know, rhetorical or whatever, but basically we will, we're willing to challenge corporations and the powerful on domestic issues. We want some, you know, better working conditions. We want Medicare, things like that. But we basically let you control the foreign policy. That's been part of a, a sort of historic compromise, not just in Canada, but in other, other uh, countries in the U.S. and European countries. Um, and so, uh, You know, it's, it's, anyways, but there's always been factions within the NDP that have wanted something different, um, and, um, and it's a matter of um, strengthening those factions, not necessarily by being active within the NDP, but being active more generally, being active with other political parties, or being active um, just in social movements that bring attention to these issues, and uh, peace movements and whatnot that, uh, that campaign on these issues. Donc, la question uh, était de parlait de euh, d'Hélène Laverdière et du euh, et du NPD et qui euh, et surtout Hélène Laverdière membre du NPD qui euh, ici à Montréal qui a soutenu les les, les casques blancs euh, et savoir donc à savoir qu'est-ce que euh, comment peut-on euh, amener un changement euh, dans notre système politique euh, Yves a répondu en disant qu'il est en train de travailler euh, enfin son prochain projet c'est un livre sur l'histoire du NPD et de la politique internationale euh, grosso modo le, 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 ce qui motive la politique internationale du NPD, euh, on peut le voir, c'est ce que disent euh, les médias, à moins qu'il y ait une mobilisation euh, forte, comme ça a été le cas en 2003 ici à Montréal. Euh, de même, euh, on sait que euh, le NPD, euh, dans, son grand, dans le, le, le grand compromis euh, historique euh, de la social-démocratie, euh, peut, dans, à certaines occasions, euh, vouloir défier les grandes entreprises euh, à l'intérieur du pays. Mais euh, tout ça dans, un, dans, 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 le, dans le but de euh, les laisser agir euh, à l'échelle internationale. Donc, pour euh, amener un changement, ben, il y a moyen, bien sûr, il existe d'autres euh, partis politiques que les trois principaux. Il existe aussi des mouvements pour la paix, des mouvements sociaux dans lesquels nous pouvons nous impliquer. OK. Alors, il y a beaucoup de questions, évidemment, qui restent. Et je ne pense pas qu'on va être capable de poser au travers. Donc, j'en garde une dernière. 
Uh, what can you say about the evolution of the public opinion in Syria, and what about outside of Syria? Alors, que pouvez-vous dire de l'évolution de l'opinion publique en Syrie et à l'extérieur de la Syrie? How, how has the uh, uh, the topic of your discussion the last hour. Within Syria or outside? No, no, outside. Within and outside. No, no, I, I don't know that I can properly address it. I think the question is what's been the evolution of public opinion on Syria? Um, it's hard for me to address because I'm, I haven't been here that much. Uh, I don't know if uh, Eve or Michelle want to address that. C'est difficile pour moi de répondre à cette question parce que je n'étais pas ici tellement ces dernières années. I'll just say one, one thing it's that when when the war broke out um, I had discussions with uh, with the Montreal uh, anti-war collective Echec à la guerre et je pense au début personne comprenait qu'il ne s'agissait pas euh, qu'il qu qu s'agissait d'une insurrection. Personne, véritablement, était conscient de ça. Et ils le considéraient comme une guerre civile. Et d'ailleurs, ils ont, ils ont pris des positions qui étaient très contradictoires. Euh, et ça, c'était fondamentalement en raison de la désinformation. Mais il y avait également de la désinformation au sein de, 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 de l'opinion progressiste, si on veut, anti-guerre. Maintenant, est-ce que ça a changé? Euh, ça, c'est une question qu'il faudrait poser au collectif anti-guerre. Okay. Donc voilà, nous, nous allons terminer ici. Euh, euh, <coughs>